All right, hey there YouTube, Dr. Yash here. Obviously we're not in the shop, so we're back at the bus. I'm gonna start calling it the FOB, the forward operating bus, because that is, uh, well, we're not gonna get into that right now. I'll explain that later. So basically what you're looking at here is the rear electrical box, according to Thomas Buses, that's their designation for this. Makes sense, rear electrical box. This houses all your, actually has some instrumentation, has some switches, um, some main interlock switches for the rest of the uh, electrical system on the bus. You can actually run the engine from the back, uh, provided you have defeated the correct interlock switches up front. Um, so, rear electrical box. Then you have what's referred to as the VEC which is attached to the side, the Vehicle Electrical Center. I think in the previous video I was saying that this was the VEC and the VEC was going to be inside of it or I don't remember how I said that but that's the VEC. This is the rear electrical box. So, and there is actually a diagnostic connector off to the side of it which is kind of neat. Those things are scattered all over this vehicle. I like that. You can plug in from virtually anywhere on this bus with a scan tool. Um, so, you can see I got the cover off. I had to grind the screw heads off and pry it off. Um, nothing crazy there. I did find some nasty corrosion, pin corroded completely off of the back of this ignition switch. These switches are, well you can see they say Thomas ignition on and off, which is kind of cool that it has a rocker cover that, you know, is labeled. And, believe that that is broken and would have to be replaced but the uh, the switch itself would need to be replaced but these rocker switches are removable um, I could get replacement covers for those but probably won't but um, I'll just put a label on it but this switch is going to need to be replaced you can jumper this and get some functionality out of it I did manage to get the chassis power working so all the stuff on the inside is functional now um, found a couple things wrong there so basically we're back to the previous owners square one so the problem that originally put this bus where it's at is at the end of around the end of 2019 he had a no start condition instrument cluster would say ECU voltage 0.0, .0 volts well now that I've got the interior electrical working we're now back at that point so I have reached out to Thomas Buses who within a few days got me the information that I needed um, it was very helpful they sent me you know I sent them the VIN number they sent me wiring diagrams so that was very nice very helpful of them. Um, so that actually gave me a lot of insight as to what's going on here so I actually was messing with this VEC. I pulled this blue connector here. And you can see there's some nasty stuff in there. Some green corrosion, some melted plastic. The connector is actually irreparably damaged. It would need to be cut off and replaced. And also there is equally as much damage inside the connector on the VEC. So the VEC would have to be replaced. Thanks to their diagrams, I found out this is not part of our problem. So this is actually only for the engine compartment lights, which is a feature that I do want to have working. But I can just put a switch on that. So I won't probably will not be spending the money to replace the VEC, being that that's not a critical engine function. That's just these lights up here. So. Um, you know, that kind of stinks, but if I run across a good used one cheap, I might put it on here and fix the connector, but that's not what we're here for. We want to get this thing running. So, the um, the rest of these switches, the body master, the chassis master, actually the ignition switch itself is good. Uh, if you push it hard enough, you can make that connection between the corrosion where that pin's corroded off the back of the switch, and it will work <laughs> so um, basically that's all there is to see here I did find out that we have power 
or the power for the ECU comes out of the black connector up top here. We're going to need to back probe that and check that for power to double check it. I'm pretty sure that we've got power. I think ground is our issue and I will show you why a little bit later. But the ground actually goes directly to the battery with a ring terminal on the end. These are big clues. But um, I'm actually going to move to the inside and going to show you uh, give you the update on the chassis electrical and show you that everything in there works let you hear all the nice You know air alarms and other such things that are going to be loud and shrieking and Those are signs of life though So I'll show you those and then we will get to where we're at today with the battery All right, so we're back We're going to show you the Inside of it do a little uh, function test here uh, let you hear the air alarm because that's always nice. Um, show you the transmission controller, or the shifter, basically. Um, you know, this thing's got some neat features. It's got um, a tilt down, tilt column, telescopic column. It, uh, it has adjustable pedals, you just, they move forward and back quite a bit. Uh, the radio does work, which is really important, you know. Um, you can't, you can't have a vehicle without a radio, so. Um, it has buttons and switches everywhere. Um, this seat actually doesn't look like it would be comfortable because, you know, it's a school bus and it's vinyl and it looks like it would be hard and uncomfortable, but it's an air seat. It's actually all the way down because there's no air in the system. But the seat, I think, is actually going to be fairly comfortable. I'm kind of surprised. I'm sitting in it like, hmm, not bad. It has an armrest here. Um, big, sticky steering wheel because it's rubber and it's been sitting for two years, a little over two years, so... You know, it needs a little bit of cleaning up. The whole thing does, but uh, that's to be expected. Basically, I'm going to turn this on. Uh, so what happens is uh, the odometer shows up, and then after it does a function test on the gauges, it says 0.0, .0 volts, which is currently, I understand that to be uh, ECU voltage. So uh, we're still having no start condition. So I'll go ahead and turn this on. Let you see the gauges dance and listen to the lovely air alarm. See the gauges sweep over. You can see this. We have communications with the transmission controller here, so that's good. Zero volts. 220,801 miles. You see the radio lit up. Oh yeah, let me show you the pedals real quick. So that's pretty neat. I think that's uh, I think that's pretty cool. You can adjust those. It has a big dead pedal because race car you know you have to have a dead pedal to when you're you know riding I don't know pick your favorite racetrack and look we'll, we'll go to like I don't even know I can't think of a racetrack but you know you gotta have a dead pedal when you're carving it up out there in your bus um, it does have power mirrors they are heated I believe all that stuff works. I think the only thing that doesn't work is the driver's heat motor it seems to be stuck. But the defrost motor works, so that's good. Um, electrically, everything seems to be functional. The speakers sound pretty blown, but, you know, that doesn't matter. We still have to get it running. So, I'll take you to the back and show you what we got going on back there. Alright, so we got you in the back again. You can see some things have been taken apart. Well. I took the charge pipe for the intercooler off, trying to get to the ECU. And basically, I checked power, checked ground. <clears throat> it appears that we're getting, <clears throat> it appears that we're getting power out of the VEC. We have both 
battery positive and switch. There we, go. we have both battery power uh, all the time and we have switched power coming out of the VEC as is in, intended. You know, this is a red wire and a gray wire. Both of those are hot coming out of the VEC. Um, I've rectified the issue with the ground getting to, or I believe I've rectified the issue with the ground getting to the ECU. Um, the next thing I need to check is, are these voltages getting to the ECU? Because there are four power wires and four ground wires. All this stuff is spliced into multiple legs once it gets closer to the ECU. So I need to make sure that all these parts of the circuit are actually getting to the ECU. Because you see, we got some, so you can't take anything for granted. Um, you can make a couple of assumptions, but when the assumptions become challenged, you go ahead and throw them out the window. Like, oh, I got power coming out of the VEC. I must have power going to the ECU. Well, we still have a no start. The instrument cluster still says zero volts, so something's not right. So. And of course, if I sprayed something in there, the engine would start. I haven't done that because I'm not putting ether in this thing because I don't need to. Um, you know, I don't. I don't think that that's going to be necessary. I've cranked on it enough that if it's running properly at all, then it would have started or at least fired, and it doesn't. It just spins. So um, I may just for the fun of it just put something in there in case that intake heater grid isn't working at all. Um, but I don't have any comms with the ECU either. There is a scan tool up there um, that connects to the phone. I hooked it up. It doesn't see the engine. It doesn't have any information on the engine. It sees the brake controller, but it does not see the engine controller. So that tells me a lot. We have, you have, if you're suspecting you don't have power and you don't have comms, there's an issue there. So. The wiring diagrams show that the full-time hot power coming out of the VEC up here, it's coming out of the back. There's a connector that plugs in the back. So the wires coming out here, they go, they're supposed to go directly to the ECU according to the diagram. So um, I back probed the black connector. Now I need to check the other end of the ECM or ECU, um, which is mounted to the side of the engine. That's why you see all this torn apart. So basically what I ended up doing was I pulled the charge pipe coming from the intercooler. Actually, Cat calls it a CAC, a charge air cooler, but it's an intercooler for most anybody else. So the pipe coming from the intercooler over to the intake, I pulled that. Um, I said, well, maybe I'll be able to get in closer to the ECU that way a little bit. Then I realized I needed to take the post down that holds the fuel filter and hydraulic reservoir for the fan motor and the power steering. Uh, so I pulled that down and now I can almost climb in there. It was kind of a pain, uh, getting around in there, but it wasn't too bad. Yep. That reservoir is pretty full. Cool. So basically there's two big, I want to say they're like 70 pin connectors on the side of the ECU. Let me see if I can get you in there to see it. I don't have a preview of what you're looking at, so let me pop you out of the out here. So you look down in here, you should be able to see at least one of the connectors. The second one is further back underneath where all that red corrugated tubing is. So the ECU lives underneath the intake manifold on the side of the block. Behind the air compressor, you know, kind of sandwiched in there in between the compressor and the starter. The starter's down bottom there, so you can see the what I'm working with. It looks like it's had a Huey pump put on it at one point. That is a Reman Huey pump. It's got a cat Reman sticker on it, so that's not surprising because it's the same pump as the C7. Let's put you in the mount. So, basically, what I want to do is 
pull the two connectors on the ECU, verify that I have power and ground getting to the ECU, because I don't really know what else to do at this point based on what I'm seeing on the diagram. So I want to mostly verify the ground. I'm fairly convinced it's getting power and not getting ground, but it's to be seen if that's true or not. So anyways, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off so you don't have to sit here and watch me climb in here. That wouldn't be a good view for you. So, I'm going to shut this off and call it a day on the video. But uh, it gives you an update on everything that's gone on actually today and the last time I was here. I didn't, I didn't pull out the camera last time. I just jumped in and started working. So, anyways, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's interesting to you. Hopefully you liked it and it showed you something. I see a lot of guys got these buses they got these engines they got i've seen somebody on a forum that had the same issue and never saw that they resolved it so <clears throat> hopefully this will help somebody out if they've got a mid 2000s uh thomas hdx with a cat motor in it. so this is 3126 so 3126 or earlier c7 um, anyways hopefully it's helpful to you and uh, you know the deal like Comment, subscribe. If you got any questions, put them down in there in the comments. I'll answer them as best I can. So, y'all have a good one. And until next time, see you later.